You remember asking an adult a question about life as a kid, and you got the old, Well, as you get older, you'll understand. To me, that phrase always sort of bugged me, because I didn't want to have to get older to understand. I wanted the wisdom without the experience. But here I am, at age 32, and it turns out they were right. It's been a pretty long time since I've made a video about anything personal. After my family disowned me and all that stuff went down, I took a step back from those sorts of videos because I felt like it was just too much for everyone. And honestly, I think it was for the best. I really needed that time to step away recalibrate. But over the past few years since all that happened, there's been some things that I learned and some of these things that I've learned just make me go, man, I wish I could teleport back in front of 26 year old Josh and be like, look, have a sit. We're going to have a chat. Okay. You know that feeling when you think back on yourself as a teenager or maybe some other blunder years of your life and you think to yourself, wow, I'm glad I got past that phase. As an adult, the blunder years happen again and again, every few years. And I'm not immune to it. I can look back to just a few years ago and I still get that same feeling as wow, I thought I was pretty cool then, huh? But even now at 30 32, I feel like a completely different person than I did at 28 years old. Honestly, maybe I should make these videos every few years and then we can just look back on all the things I've learned about myself and thought I knew that I didn't. That's why I just want to tell you about some things that I wish someone had told me. The first thing I want to talk about and the hardest for me personally is it's okay to ask for help. And as I've worked through therapy, I've really internalized that you are allowed to change. You don't have to be stuck as that person. You're allowed to be someone else. You're allowed to learn new behaviors and unlearn old behaviors. And I think the fear of changing and turning into someone else, becoming who you want to be, holds a lot of people back. Another thing I'd like to add to that that's been a gut punch for me is just being open to being wrong and genuinely listening as to why. Of course, no one wants to be wrong and it feels really bad when you are, but it's taken me a while to realize that you can be wrong without doing anything wrong and that's okay. I can go back and watch some of my older videos and go, oof. Honestly, I'd actually start to worry if I look back at myself and I don't see some sort of cringe. For me, a big part of this change has been really learning how to put myself in someone's shoes and actually walking. And while I think we all know it's a good way to check yourself, I don't think many of us really do that. Call it empathy, call it passion, call it emotional intelligence, call it turning 30, I don't know. It's been eye-opening for me to see just how much of who I am and how I behave and how I react to things was because of who I grew up with, how I grew up, and how I learned to process situations and emotions. Now, I'm not trying to excuse myself of anything, but there have just been times over the past couple years where I've thought to myself, wait, is that really my opinion? For example, I can look back to videos just a few years ago where I talk about relationships, and love and emotions and and I can see just how hardened and emotionally tangled I am in those videos but I don't regret making those videos because I didn't know what I didn't know environment really does shape who you are the next thing I wish I had been more open to and taken more seriously was my health and I'm speaking both about mental and physical here as for mental for me it was a long time of me refusing to talk to anyone about my problems I was your stereotypical stubborn guy that thought that paying for therapy was paying for someone to care about you for a certain time limit it was immature it was silliness and even back then I remember thinking well just be a man and suffer in silence no one wants to hear you complain but that's not what therapy is either. There's no long, tell me about how that makes you feel. It's just, oh, I can change that behavior. And when this stimulus is given to my brain, I can regulate how I respond to that. Now let's move on to physical health. In my opinion, physical health is consistency over everything. Don't get me wrong, effort at the gym is important, but if it's too sparse, then it doesn't matter. And what I've also learned when it comes to fitness is that everyone goes through phases. I've gone through different phases. I've gone through like all of the phases. My goals have shifted so many different times, I can't even count. For those of us who don't do fitness for a living, it can be difficult to find a reason to keep going. But that's the thing. You have to keep finding a reason. It doesn't have to be the gym, just something that gets you up and going. And the reason I say all that is you either deal with your health now, over time, just a little bit, day to day, or you'll probably end up dealing with your health a lot later on in life all at once. But besides physical fitness and mental health, I wish someone would have told me to take care of my skin like I should be doing. Because today's sponsor is Tiege Hanley. That's right, you and I both never thought you'd see a skincare brand on this channel, did you? No, but seriously, I've actually had issues with my skin my entire life, and I never really knew much about that sector of life until I met HR Lady. Maybe you haven't noticed, but I have rosacea on my cheeks, so I forever look like I'm a little kid blushing and I'm shy. And on top of that, I also have eczema, so to put it simply, I can't just use anything. If you don't know what Tiche Hanley is, they're an affordable skincare product for guys like you and me, and basically it simplifies the process of taking care of our skin. And there might be some of you out there looking at these six bottles of Tiche Hanley going, wow, that's a lot. But it's actually not because they keep it stupid simple with this instruction card and it tells you what to do. I live in Utah, which is basically a dry, arid desert, and it's terrible for my skin, but Tiche Hanley manages to keep my skin silky smooth and moisturized without being oily, and that was the issue for me. Skincare wasn't always something that I took seriously, but it's something that I wish I did, honestly. It's just been some nights for me where the eczema does not want to cooperate, but ever since using Tiege, I don't have that issue anymore. 
But I get it, you don't just have to take my word for it because they have over 7,000 five-star reviews from customers around the globe. This one's my favorite review because it's basically me. Just like all the commercials say, I was that guy that would think a soap bar was enough. Since then, my experience with Tiege has had me looking into other products to see what works and what doesn't. Trial and error. Yeah, exactly. And to clarify, if you're wondering what I use, it's the level three anti-aging routine because I'm 32 now and it matters. This was a big one for me, the amount of products and the regimen. But once you know what to do, it's not an overwhelming routine at all. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. This next topic I want to talk about is a pretty well-known metaphor, but that is crabs in a bucket are rampant through life. It's the classic metaphor of behaviors for individuals who believe that they should be more successful than others, want other people to fail, and cannot tolerate other people's success. Stay away from these people. When one crab begins to climb up the sides out of the bucket, the other crabs will grab onto it and pull it back down. And this behavior continues until none of the crabs are able to escape. In other words, the group would rather all share a collective demise than let one person be successful. It's been a pattern I've seen in my own life, many times, actually. You see, I've taken the path less traveled and a lot of trails that I've made for myself. And every single time I was about to start walking down my trails, there were suddenly 50 people standing in front of me telling me why it's a bad idea and how it's going to ruin my life, as if they're the ones that have to live my life and walk down these trails. I'm not saying ignore valuable advice from people that disagree or have other opinions, but there's a difference between a crab in a bucket and advice. What I've learned is as you grow and as you change because you will, people that you know and people that you respect will try and hold you back. It will be people close to you, your best friend, your family, brothers, sisters, coworkers, people that you trust and have rapport with, people that you might even get advice from. And when those are the other people that are in the bucket with you, it can be the hardest to get out. And the people you love and trust that are telling you not to do what you know you should do. And there are two big reasons why it's the hardest, and I'll tell you why. They might actually be right, and you might be wrong. Your idea might be crazy, your goals might be crazy, your ambitions might be insane, and you have to take the L and move on to something else. Or the second reason, even worse, what if you're right and they're wrong? Now you have to do it despite their opinions and comments. You have to push past all of those one-off little quips they make. You're going to have to find a way to work through and dismiss the judgment of those around you that say what you're doing might be a little crazy, and you're gonna keep doing it anyways. Here's what you have to keep in mind. Don't confuse these people's comments for actual advice. And sometimes what they say will pierce every piece of armor you have, and it will make you question everything about yourself and your goals. Just one little comment. Imagine if we had a list of all of the things that could have been invented, or all of the ways the world could have been changed, but none of it ever happened because a friend or a family member or a coworker said something dumb. Chances are they probably don't even remember saying it. When someone tries to improve their situation or pursue their dreams, it can be threatening to those who feel stuck or unhappy with their own lives. They might feel envious of the other person's success and try to bring them down to their own level. But obviously, no one says that out loud, it just manifests itself in behaviors. Crabs say things like, that's cool, but I don't know if that's for you. You? Doing that? Oh, I would have never thought. Oh, that doesn't seem like the real you. That doesn't sound like you. Oh, that doesn't seem like you, Josh. That's Or this classic one, that's crazy. Nobody would ever want that. Ignore these people, they're just seeds of doubt. You have to be in your mind and body all day, not them. But they'll preach to you as if they're the ones that are. Can't let these people box you in. And you cannot confuse their comments, which is what they are, for actual advice. So what do you do anyways? You take out your machete and you start hacking your own path through that jungle. And yeah, they will ridicule you while you're in the thick of it. During the moments you wanna give up, the moments you might be lost, the moments it would be easy just to believe their comments. Because again, they're the people you trust. They're your friends and family. They just want what's best for you, right? Right? And I absolutely understand how annoying and frustrating it can be when you don't have people around you that support you. Or even worse, when you have people around you that are just pretending to support you, but don't actually. Now here are a few finance and money related things that I wish I had known about way sooner. And let me just say, this isn't financial advice or anything. These are just things that would have greatly benefited me had I only known they existed. To start off, I wanna mention first time homebuyer programs. I own a house here in Utah and I did it through the first time homebuyer program. It wasn't through YouTube money. I actually did it while I was working my $65,000 salary programming job and supporting my parents and all of their expenses. And that was because I didn't have to put any money down when I bought the house. Now these programs may or may not exist in your area, but you should ask about them. Because for me, I wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't have that program. So if you're looking at buying a house, look around for first time homebuyer programs in your area and see if you qualify and see if it makes sense. I think it could open up a lot more doors for people than they realize. Now let me pause and also say it is a very privileged position to be able to own a house and I recognize that. However, for the people, however, for people out there at that point in life that might be able to afford a house but aren't sure, 
this might help them. It really helped me. And again, I know interest rates are high and the cost of living has skyrocketed and the price of houses have skyrocketed, so it might not matter anyways. However, if you manage to find something and if it works out for you, see if there's still first-time homebuyer programs in your area. My program was actually pretty cool. They covered my entire down payment and then as long as I made the payments on time for two years consistently, they actually forgave that down payment portion of the loan. Now the next topic I think would benefit people greatly is if they learned about business expenses. Once you start learning about it, you start to understand and see how these CEOs leverage it to make more money at the literal expense of employees. When you start learning about what counts as a business expense, how much you can business expense, mixed use business expenses, all different types of ways to expense money to reduce your overall taxable income at the end of the year. That's actually what most of these companies do. They spend all of the money that they make so they don't have any money left to pay taxes on. I mean, yeah, they pay their like local city taxes and they pay payroll tax, but like if you're wondering how they avoid uh, the big, huge federal taxes and income tax and all that stuff, they just, they just spend everything they make. So on paper, they didn't make any money. I'm telling you, once you start researching business expenses and taxes and accounting and all that, you can really put together how these wealthy people kind of do it. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an expert. This isn't financial advice. This is just stuff I've learned over time doing this, and it's greatly benefit me as well. And this last one is a question that I think a lot of people struggle with. When do I have to have it all figured out? When do I have to have my life plan? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to accomplish this? And that all has to be laid out in a book for you to follow. And you're just waiting for that book to show up in the mail. I'm only 32, but here's what I think is happening. Everyone just makes it look like they have it all figured out while also wondering, how does everyone else have it figured out? In my opinion, you don't have to have it all figured out by the time you're 20, 25, 30, 32. I can't go further than that because I need more time. But your life doesn't have to look a certain way. Here's a fun thought experiment. Remember when you were a kid and you thought your parents had it all figured out? Well, at least some of us did. They were superheroes to us. You know, they knew what to do when something went wrong. It didn't matter what question you had, they had an answer. And if they didn't, they probably still did. I'm 32 years old and I was born when my dad was 27 years old. And I often stop and think I'm 32 and I, I think I kind of know what I'm doing. But like did, my, like, did my parents feel like this too when they were 32? And chances are, they probably did. But you were a kid and you had no idea. They were just regular people like you and me trying to figure it out as they go. Whenever I start to feel that way, that's just kind of what I think about. I just think for a lot of people, including myself, that they're told they're supposed to go this certain way. And you start going down that way and you're like, no, nah, this, this is not for me. And they're like, wait. What are you doing? Why? No, this is the best way, the safe way. You don't want to disappoint your family and your parents and friends, and you don't want to disappoint yourself because you've worked so hard to get to this point. What was it all for? There's a lot of moments like that as an adult that I think no one prepares you for, and you just have to figure it out. I don't think there will ever be a time where someone goes, hmm, yep, I know exactly what to do for the rest of my life. I mean, you might think that, but... Like, will it happen that way? Probably not. But that's all I have to say for now. So I hope this stuff helped you. It really helped me. I really wish someone just teleported and told me this stuff. And I mean, I probably wouldn't have believed them then. But hopefully you wouldn't be like me and you're open to some of this stuff. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button. Click that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what helped you, what didn't help you. And once again, I'd like to say thank you to Tej Hanley for supporting the channel. I've been using their stuff for quite a bit of time and it's helped me. So again, if you're interested, go support the people who support this channel. Having said that, I hope everyone's doing well and I'll see you in the next one.